Hi, I'm David Chai. I'm the program coordinator for San Jose State University's animation illustration program. Nice to see you. Um, I started off, I'm, 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 a, I'm a San Jose State graduate. So I graduated with a bachelor's degree in illustration and a master's in animation. And um, when I originally came back to study animation, I had no interest in animation at all. So I just came back just to learn how to draw better. And uh, the minute I saw that stuff moving around on screen, I got hooked. So uh, I've been animating ever since. And um, my work, the work I do is uh, mostly in animated short films. So independent films that I send to like film festivals and places like that. Well, okay, every summer I produce a, a short film and I do it with the help of students. So um, I get a group of students and when we're not sheltering in place, we meet every day in the art building in room 218, unless it's still taken over by another student. And um, we just work all summer long and uh, I buy pizza on Fridays. And you know, every, every year it's a different film. Some are funny and some are goofy and some are weird and some are more sensitive. So every time it's a different topic and a different style and a different theme. And it's fun, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Like it's a lot of work. So every, every film we make is frame by frame. So it's a, a drawing, 12 drawings per second. And um, yeah, it takes the whole summer long, but we tend to have a really good time doing it. Goof around a lot, have fun. Mm. When I was in school, I had a really great mentor, uh, two me great mentors, Alice Carter, her, her nickname's Bunny, Bunny Carter and Courtney Graner. And um, I, saw, I saw what they were able to do with their program and the, the, uh, the effect it had on so many of our graduates' lives, you know, the, the positive effect. So I knew eventually I wanted to get back into, or get into education and try, try to do something like they did. And um, I moved away for a while. And when I moved back, there was a teaching position open uh, in the program. So I came to teach with them. And um, when they retired not too long ago, I ended up somehow taking over the program. So I'm trying to not screw up uh, the legacy that they uh, have started. So. So in our field, scholarly uh, publication comes in the form of um, making films or making a graphic novel or making a game. And so uh, I have to, well, I don't have to, well, I kind of have to in a couple of different ways. Like I have to, to satisfy my creative, my creative heart to make films. I would do it even if I didn't have to. Um, but fortunately I also have to do it as a professor just to maintain my scholarly activity. And uh, it's great because I kind of have to do it because I want to, and I have to do it because I have to do it. So it's a kind of win-win. Well, I think that I think one of the contributions of, of working on these films in the summer is a great benefit for the students. And so I, I know that a lot of times um, people will come to me trying to get free student labor. Like they, they, they want cheap animation and they don't understand how much work goes into it. So I want to make sure people don't think I'm like exploiting students when we're making films, but rather, um, it's like a real production. It's like a real production workflow, and so um, a lot of a lot of times the films we make, uh, I have students that are like juniors, like juniors or even sophomores, sometimes seniors, that are um, working on films that eventually compete at a like a professional level against you know studios, you know the people that are out of school and this and that, and um, I think the experience they get is is really good. A lot of the a lot of my graduates and the ones who have worked with me. Um, say that it's uh, been a, of a benefit to them when they've graduated. If I, I don't know how, I don't know how my films contribute to the field. Like, it's like saying, look, none of my films have like revolutionized filmmaking. You know what I mean? It's like, how did your, how did the book you write change literature? You know, it's like, it's, you know, but um, I'd like to think that I, that my films have been pretty well received internationally and nationally at festivals and this and that. And, um, in terms of like films making social change, uh, you know, like the, the films I make generally, well, for the most part, haven't been like big social messages yet. Um, you know, some are funny, some are like uh, biographical and, and each, each film has its own, you know, sort of moral or sort of, you know, thing, but there hasn't been a real, there hasn't been one film yet that has been like a, just a, a very strong, uh, vehicle for social change. I'm actually working on one next summer for that. But um, a big project I work on is is with the Green Ninja, and the Green Ninja is a uh, is a entity that creates um, educational content and curriculum for middle middle school students to teach them about climate science. 
and protecting the, the world and about science in general. So I've done a lot of stuff with those guys. And I feel like um, just in terms of social change, that's the biggest uh, contribution I've been able to give is um, making these quirky videos and animation that accompanies um, you know, the curriculum they develop. And uh, that's a pretty big deal. Well, climate change is like the biggest thing facing us, you know? And so if we can teach the young people to protect the planet and do things right, hopefully by the time they're our age, that'll be passed down to the younger ones. And so I think that would be my, that'd be my biggest contribution in terms of art to the field. The Shrunken Headman Club is the San Jose State University Animation Illustration Student Club. And it was, it was started in 1995 by myself and a bunch of other graduates as just a way to build a community so that young students feel comfortable working with older students and vice versa. And we picked the Shrunken Headman name just to be weird because every other club on campus had just a very, I don't want to put down other clubs, but boring names such as, uh, for example, maybe the, the Women Electrical Engineers Volleyball Team for Christ or just very literal names. So we picked Shrunken Headman just to be weird. But over the years, it, it has become more appropriate. It's become appropriate because our students don't have swollen egos. They have sh shrunken heads, they're humble. And our guys are the sweetest, they're the coolest guys ever. So if you can ever come to a Shrunken Headman event, please do because uh, you'll, I think you'll enjoy the energy and the camaraderie and the, the vibe that we have in our program. I'm, I'm inspired by so many different things. Uh, it just depends. So some of my films have been based on people I know. Like I have two films that are based, three films that are based, that are based around students I've met. Uh, sometimes I have a weird dream and I'll get an idea. Two or three films have been like that. Sometimes it's just an idea that has been challenged to me. Someone will give you a, a project and you, and you do it. And uh, I've made films out of comic books that I've uh, worked on. Um, sometimes I did a, biography on my father's journey or his experience uh, coming to uh, leaving the Korean War and coming to the United States as a kid and his battle with depression that was more of a kind of heavier sort of tribute to my father who's also a San Jose State retired professor of electrical engineering. One of my films was a tribute to my dog who passed away and so sometimes they're you know different different stories. Yeah so the film about my father is interesting in that at the time I was living uh, in Detroit, Michigan, um, a lot of times when I first moved there, I had to drive because I had a dog. I didn't want to stick the dog in a plane. So my father volunteered to drive across the country with me. And um, we had a good time kind of bonding and eating fast food and stuff. So we would oftentimes in the summer take a road trip together back and forth from Michigan to California or vice versa. And during one trip, he told me some crazy stories about things that had happened to him like in his life that he never told me in all the years I've known the guy since I was born. And uh, it was just in one road trip, he told me so much that, um, that I thought it would make a good story. And he, he's also an aspiring author. So he had written a couple books, he wrote his biography and stuff. And um, I wanted to just try to do it in a, in a, in a short form film and just focus on uh, you know, the story of an immigrant you know, to a different country. And also uh, to talk about his uh, battle with depression and you know, almost suicide and kind of give hope to people that are in either or both of those situations and let them know that there's you know, brighter futures ahead, if possibly. And working with my dad was fun too. Working with anyone is fun for voice talent, but my father, he's, he's, uh, has a kind of a, a Korean accent. So working with him, trying to get him to say the lines I don't know if you ever watched the end of Rush Hour, but it's like when uh, Jackie Chan has his bloopers, getting the guy to just even say the lines right. I would read him one line and it's, I'd say, I'd say, okay, okay, you gotta say, uh, coming to America was a, was a challenge that I never faced in my life. And he get to the mic and he goes, life was tough, man. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, so little side story. I think in the courses I teach, the course I teach, the main course I teach is um, a class in which the students have to do an animated film. They have to make a, a 30 second animated film, which is usually two minutes, but 30 seconds. And um, I just, I can bring my experience into, you know, designing stories or making stories or making films uh, into the class because it's exactly what I do. You know, every, that's my kind of, my, my thing. So uh, I'm able to bring that into the classroom and 
hopefully inspire them with, you know, some of the stories or some of the challenges I've faced and how to overcome them or, you know, deal with issues with, you know, either making a story or technical issues or motivational issues. And uh, it's a fun class because even making one film is fun. So if you're in a room with 17 or 20 people and uh, you're making a film, you get to do all the fun things with like making a story and doing this and that, except you get to do it 20 times. Um, yeah, and also making making something I love about making a film or making films. I started doing it as a graduate student. And um, I think I just got some sort of bug because every, Every summer now, I have to. Right, I have to do it. I just I have to do it. And every time you finish a film project, at least me, it's like you're you're going through a battle with with your with your colleagues. You know what I mean? It's like it's so hard. Or, I mean, that's hard, but it's a lot of work. So by the time you get through, like the people with whom you worked, like you feel like there's a. I, at least I do. I feel like there's a connection. You know, and like uh, and so you see each other in the hallways afterwards. You know, and and school starts in the fall, and people are walking by. Hey, how was your summer? And you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I had no summer. And you look at the other, the other colleague coming down the hallway, and you kind of have a look at each other. You're like, yeah, you know, it's kind of cool. I work with a lot of, yeah, I work with a lot of colleagues at San Jose State, um, and mo mostly I do that um, with the Green Ninja projects. So we work with people from radio, TV, and film, and I work with a lot of scientists, and they they work with you know other people in education and uh, music. So that's super fun getting to work with people from different disciplines. Um, not so much in my, not so much in my summer films. Um, yeah, but, but the Green Ninja stuff is fun. Yeah, so I don't know if these are good tips, but I have some tips. Like, uh, I think, it, well, my father, retired professor, he used to come home sometimes and complain that, that this, about the students. He would say, these kids just want to be entertained. You know, he's old school. But I kind of think like, if they want to be entertained, why can't you just entertain them and educate at the same time? You know, keep the energy up a little bit. I can't, God bless these students. I, if I sit through a meeting, it, sometimes it's impossible. You're just sitting there for like an hour, just going destroy, you know, kill, <laughs> no, no, don't say that. But sometimes you sit there and you're like, oh my God, this is going on forever. These kids are sitting through a three hour lecture class. So I think, I think it's important to, to mix it up and um, keep them on their toes, you know? So uh, I will often um, just call on a student and ask them just a, interest, a weird question or um, on Zoom, especially, I'll, I'll be like, hey, what are you eating? You know, and they'll hold their sandwich up. I'm like, oh, that, you know, that kind of stuff. And then uh, oftentimes we'll have some, what's it called? What's it called when you uh, say something out of the blue or, uh, like a non sequitur, I guess you'd call it. Like sometimes in the middle of a lecture, you know, an idea will come to my head and I'll, I'll share, I'll share a non sequitur with them or tell them a quick little story just to kind of keep them, keep them, you know, keep them alive, you know? And I think it's important to engage the students a lot. And I know plenty of professors do that, but um, calling on people specifically by name, trying to kind of keep them on their toes because I know you're possibly going to call them at one point. And, uh, I think, well, like my philosophy with making films is, is if you're gonna do something that difficult, it should be fun, you know? So I always try to bring, I always try to make it fun when you're, when you're producing animation and it usually is. So I have the same philosophy when we're teaching the classes is if we're gonna be sitting here, might as well have a good time too, you know? I think one thing is, I know you can't do this in every class. I know people have big lectures and, you know, giant classes, but I do think it's very important to um, get to know your students. And you know that might be more difficult in a in a, a class in which like you only see them that one semester and then they're gone. You don't see them again. You know I know that can be tougher, but for us it's like I kind of see these guys all throughout the five years and uh, get to know them a little better, which is nice. But um, I do take time at the beginning of class to do a roll call and uh, have a different theme: your favorite fast food or your favorite Thanksgiving dish or your favorite what a movie or something or your the scariest thing that ever happened to you just so the students get to know each other. Cause at least in our program, it's a, um, it's a community that extends far out into the industry. You know, and we have a couple of decades of our graduates in industry. And it's, it's really important that we know each other and can work with each other, you know? And so 
the better you know someone, I think the more likely you are, are to reach out to them and ask for help or have a sense of community. Okay. Well, look, I think I think a lot of people, we, we always say it, it's, it's good to lead by example, right? And so I think when a professor comes in, like even like an eight o'clock class, if, if you if you come in an eight o'clock class and act as tired as you really are, you know, that reflects on the, or the students will reflect that or they'll, they'll, they'll eat, feed off of that. But if you come in bouncing off the walls and, and energized and you know excited, that rubs off on them as well. You know, so even if ever you're having a bad day, like, I don't know if it's just the, the energy of the students, it's kind of symbiotic, but you know, once I st once you step in the room or the Zoom room, it's kind of on, you know, it's like, it's showtime and you gotta get you gotta make it happen with the students, you know? So I think, I think it's important to uh, let the students see your enthusiasm for the, for the, you know, the field or the project. And, um, you know, you can feed off their energy, they feed off yours and it just kind of, over the 20 years that we've been an animation illustration program, um, we've had pretty good success in student placement. And uh, our guys go everywhere from Disney to Warner Brothers, to Pixar, DreamWorks, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Fox, Film Roman, Bento Box. Uh, they go to EA, they go to Blizzard, they go to Zynga, Industrial Light and Magic, LucasArts. We have pretty good placement uh, across the board. And I think a lot of that is um, a result of, well, I mean, it's good, we have good training, but I think it, it's also the culture that we have, you know, and the, the type of personality and the type of attitudes that our students uh, kind of develop working with us and one, with one another. I think you have to set limits. Like I'm, I'm the program coordinator. So I, in addition to teaching the classes, you know, I have to do a lot of different like managerial things or like, I don't know, what, it, what do you even call it? Administrative type of stuff. You have meetings, you have to schedule classes, you have to help students that are having disasters, this and that. And it, it could go on all day. I mean, it could go on, I mean, all, it could go on all day long, just email, whatever, whatever. I'll tell you a tip. Can I share a tip with you? This is something I've learned. Two words. It's automation and delegation. So if you're in a position where you have like too much stuff and you're like running something, one thing is automation. So like I use Google Forms all the time. And so if, if I need to find out, hey, which of you students can come? Duh, instead of just getting email back, I set up a form. So then I have a list with their contact and I can hit them, hit them back in one email blast. Like it sounds like, it sounds no kidding, right? But that's something that saved a lot of time with me. And then two, I've learned this from my animation projects as well as my um, coordination project or coordination role is that when I first started making films, I felt like I had to be, I had to do everything. So I'd have to do all the layout drawings. I'd have to do all the key animation. I'd have to do whatever. And I'm almost given a heart attack. You know, it's like, you can't work, you can't work 20 hours a day, every day for three months. And the same goes with teaching or coordination. It's like, you could, but then if you kind of can delegate some tasks or, you know, find ways to automate or make things more efficient, you have to take time. I mean, you have to take time, otherwise you're just gonna die. And so like, I have a colleague, I have a colleague with whom I work. And maybe I shouldn't say her name, but I just did. And um, I asked her one time, I said, when you go home, do you worry about work? Like, cause like, I'll just be sitting here like, oh, I should check my email, I should do this. She says, no, like once you get off the clock, chill out. Maybe you shouldn't put that because you'll get her in trouble, but you could beep out her name. But it's true. It's like at some point you have to say, I'm not going to check email on a Sunday during the football game. Not that I watch football. You know, you have to set boundaries, I think. Okay. Well, I hate to say goodbye, but I have to say goodbye. So I want to thank you guys for taking time to watch this video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the show. And I'll send you off with peace and love. And hope you guys all have a nice academic experience.